Welcome to Daz Geek. What we have here is the MacBook Pro. Now, I know what you're thinking. Did he go out and buy another Apple product? Well, I've had this the entire time, but this is my first time showing this device. And there's a reason why I held off on showing this specific Apple device because of this video here where I need to explain why you should never, ever buy one of these. But before we get to that, let's take a look at this because the device is gorgeous. What am I thinking when I say that? You've got this beautiful retina screen, not the crappy 1920 by 1080 that comes with most of the so-called premium laptops out there. You get this beautiful screen. You get a gorgeous keyboard, although this is the 2016 model, so it doesn't come with the magic keyboard. This comes with the butterfly one that everybody hates, and I get why they hate it, because if you use the 2020 Air, you'll realize how amazing that magic keyboard is. This butterfly keyboard, if you didn't know any different though, would still be better than a lot of keyboards you get on a lot of laptops out there. And then let's look at that trackpad. I mean, it's huge. It is massive trackpad. It's got that glass. It feels amazing. You could do gesturing on it. I just love it. And this frame, this gorgeous unibody frame. And I know people will be like, yeah, but uh, there are other unibodies out there. They copied it. After Apple did this unibody design, everyone went out and a lot of the premium laptops do copy it and they copy it well now. But, you know, you got to give props where it's due. Now, there are some engineering issues, like there's fans under there. You can't probably see them, but that's where your exhaust is. And when you're running Intel inside these, not very good. But remember, Apple's going ARM, so they're not going to have as many issues probably with heat dissipation. But remember I said, even though this is gorgeous, beautiful kit, don't ever buy one. That's what this video is going to be about. That's why I waited so long to show this to you. And once this video is over, I can put this on eBay and let some unlucky sucker get their hands on this thing because if it ever breaks, well, they're in big trouble. Let's talk about it. But don't take my word for it. What's one of the most trusted fix-it sites out there? I fix it. They're not sponsoring this video. They should sponsor my channel, but they don't. But here you take a look at some of the scores for repairability. Now, what this is looking for specifically is can you replace the RAM? Can you replace the battery? Can you replace the SSD? How easy is it to get into the device? And you can see these HPs here at nines, nines, tens, nines, everything is easy to get into. You see some sixes. And now we're at the MacBook Pro 16 inch 2019. So their latest edition, and it gets a one, a one. Minor components are modular, but the processor, RAM, and flash memory are soldered to the logic board, glue and or rivets secure the keyboard, battery, speakers, and touch bar. The Touch ID sensor is the power switch and is locked to the logic board, greatly complicating repairs. And if you go on and look at the other MacBooks here, you'll see this one's a two, this one's a one, this one here is at least a three. If you're going to get a MacBook, you got to go the air because at least there's some level of repairability to it. Although most things again are soldered together, which is what my point is of this video that Apple makes beautiful hardware. Their designers are incredible. The problem is it seems like the engineering department has no say anymore in what Apple is putting out there. The engineers don't even seem like they're allowed in the conference room when Apple's deciding if they're going to release a new device or not. They're basically like, hey, we have this idea for a design for a laptop and the engineers are like, ah, you can't do that, it's too thin or you're not gonna be able to get into it. And they're like, I don't care, just make it happen. We just want it to look good. It doesn't have to be functional. And that is terrible engineering. Apple gets so much credit for great engineering. And you know what? In some cases, they deserve that credit. Let's take a look here at the iMac. This is engineering and design come together to make something absolutely amazing. Here you have this beautiful kit. The designers went all ham on it. Looks good, very sexy. A lot of people copied this all-in-one design. And if you wanna replace the RAM, you just push a little button on the back of the iMac. It opens a little door 
it reveals your RAM slots here. You pop them out, you put new RAM in, you put the door back on, anybody could do it, and you've got your RAM upgraded. How fantastic. I showed you the Mac Mini. You could get in there and change the RAM. Now, of course, they didn't take it to the next level, which would be, what are some other things that would go wrong here? Well, you may want to upgrade your storage. You can't. You can't without a massive undertaking here because once again, they decided to go for design over function. And honestly, they just hate people going out and repairing, it seems like, any of their devices. They want a complete monopoly on forced obsolescence of making your device not work, which they've been sued for in the phones and other departments, and then coming in and making it so people who repair these devices like Lewis Rossman, who repairs Apple devices. He's a certified repair technician for Apple. will tell you all day long, don't buy one of these things. And he makes his living off of this. Uh, he'll give you a couple specific devices if you watch his channel that you could buy, and it's an amazing channel. He goes and does board level repair, but he can't believe what they've done, the terrible engineering inside of these devices. And they've been sued for a lot of their terrible designs as well. There's this issue called stage lighting. That's what it was dubbed, where they basically made a tie in the laptop cable with the display that if you open the display up and down too many times, it would just tear it off. Like, this is stupid design. This is stupid engineering. And this is what happens when you don't let engineering into the discussion with the design department. Either that or the engineering department at Apple doesn't exist anymore. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's shockingly bad. This is not even something that the consumers should put up with. It gets even worse. So look at what you're going to have to do to get into this MacBook Pro. You've got to put on some safety gloves and some safety glasses. You've got to get the acetone dissolver here, which thankfully I fix it has created in a nice convenient bottle. You got to apply drops of it around the battery cells so that it starts dissolving the glue. Then you shove a card underneath to start trying to pry it back up. And then you start doing that to the other side and then the middle, and then you use these cards and keep trying to pull it up gently. Don't use excessive force. You'll break stuff and you could, you know, hurt the battery, hurt the computer, make it explode, who knows? And then you can peel up this ridiculously, stupidly engineered battery pack here. And then you can replace the tape and put your new battery pack in and go through all of these steps one more time of peeling up cables and moving cords and everything else so that you can get into this device to replace something they absolutely know is going to go bad at some point, the batteries are gonna wear out, the batteries are gonna start swelling, it's gonna be a major issue. It's just terrible design. Now, I absolutely love Marquez and a lot of his videos on here, I pretty much watch every video he comes out with. Fantastic human being, love his channel. He doesn't need you to subscribe because he's got 11.6 million and I'm nobody, but you know, definitely consider joining. But these individuals do cover and reach a much bigger audience and they talk about the Apple products and you know, you've got uh, Linus Tech Tips and all of these individuals that have these massive audiences that review these products. And every time I think it's a responsibility, I would call on these individuals and I would call on you as a community when you see these videos to politely call out the fact that it's important when we talk about these devices to discuss things like repairability and the importance of things like forced obsolescence when they're essentially taking away your rights as a consumer to repair your own devices. And when you're spending two, 3,000 plus on these devices, it should be something that everyone should be mad about with Apple because we know they're capable of amazing designs. We know they're capable of amazing engineering. They just choose not to. They choose not to make a functionally repairable device, and that's a shame. But if you're looking for a product that's not a shame, then you should check out the sponsor of this channel, DigitalOcean. This channel and the Destination Linux Network is sponsored by the awesome folks at DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is a cloud service 
for dropping servers that you will absolutely love. It is the best cloud platform out there on the planet. It's optimized to make managing and scaling apps easy with an intuitive API, multiple storage options, integrated firewalls, load balancers, and more. What all that means is they take care of so much of the hassle of dropping a server. And if you want to set up a WordPress site, you want a new Minecraft server, you want a Jitsi, you want to learn Linux, this is your way to do it here. DigitalOcean announced new features like virtual private cloud in all regions free of charge. Container registry is now available to all users as an early availability release. And new quick install droplets have been added. What this means is you can go in there, go to their marketplace, one-click installs to set up servers. Absolutely amazing. You can get started on DigitalOcean for free with a $100 credit by going to do.co slash DLN. That's a $100 credit free for two months. You can drop a massive server or a little small droplets, a bunch of little ones, learn a bunch of things, get your brains filled with all kinds of awesome cloud goodness. We know that this is where a lot of business is going. This is where if you're interested in getting into IT, you should be focusing your attention because there's going to be cloud in your future. I guarantee it. And what better place to learn than DigitalOcean where you're going to get 2,000 cloud agnostic tutorials to help you out along the way. You can get all this plus access to the world-class customer support. As little as $5 per month for one of these droplets. That's what DosGateCommunity.com runs on. That's what Destination Linux website runs on. Discourse forums. All of it is DigitalOcean. So go to do.co slash DLN and check them out. There's really not much left to say. It's beautiful design, terrible engineering. That's Apple in a nutshell. If you're going to buy an Apple product, then you would be better off with the MacBook Air than whatever makes this pro. I don't, I can sit here and excuse things having nothing but Thunderbolt ports because Thunderbolt's quite amazing and you can do a lot of things with it. And yeah, you're going to have to carry around dongles and things and it's silly but you can make an excuse for it for the thinness and beauty of the device and the simplicity and power of those ports. You can make excuses for many things that Apple does, but you cannot with a straight face tell me that it's a good engineering decision, a good design decision to completely make your devices purposely unrepairable. It's shocking, it's sad, and it makes me have to tell everybody do not waste your money on a MacBook Pro. Don't do it. It's absolute disaster waiting to happen. And a lot of their products, they are fantastic and they have great customer service. But if you do have a problem outside of warranty, you are not guaranteed you're going to get any service on that device or you're going to be paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars to fix issues on this device that you could have fixed for yourself had they actually engineered it well. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this terrible engineering decision on Apple's part. Is it something that's kept you from ever purchasing them? There's a lot of great things in the Apple ecosystem. I love Mac OS. I think it's a fantastic operating system. I like the design and look and feel of a lot of their hardware, but things like this make Apple an absolute no-go. Maybe when they transfer to ARM, they'll do something different. Who knows? Again, Thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. And that thumbs up if you like this video.